In my experience, portraits can be a little tricky. So I did something I don't usually do, practice rounds. It's hard being this beautiful. I chose gouache as my weapon of choice, which was a mistake given I am not very familiar with gouache. So there was definitely a learning curve involved, but it did help me familiarize myself with the shape of my face. And all in all, I really enjoy the material and will be using it again. It was also really satisfying to see my improvement with each portrait. I am uncertain as to whether or not these portraits will actually help me because I wasn't able to experiment with color and composition as much as I wanted to, but we'll see. I don't want to do any more practices, <laughs> that's for sure. Five is more than enough for me. So with the wind in my sails, I prepared for my next adventure. Wind sailed me into some fatigue and cramps, but I packed up my trusty heating pad and my extremely messy bun, and I was able to get to work. One of my biggest takeaways from my gouache experiment was that sketches are extremely important, but I don't like the feeling of pencil on canvas, and I feel like it smudges into your paints and makes the pigments come out murky. So I opted for a paint sketch. Honestly, I think the pencil issue is user error, so I'll probably revisit in the future, but not this round. On the topic of sketching, the purpose is to get the proportions right, and a fun practice that my art teacher used to have us do is not only grid the paper, but also draw upside down so you don't get distracted about what your mind thinks it sees. Rather, you are looking at the exact shapes of what is in each part of your grid. I don't like using grids anymore because I'm a rebel without a cause, but something I do like to do is use a mirror. Putting your canvas in front of a mirror reflects all of the blind spots of your naked eye back to you. When I stand in front of that mirror, all of the patterns that my eyes glossed over, like the left side being too large, one eye being too high above the other, all of those are reflected back. And the inversion makes it so that my eyes can't fall back into their natural patterns of assuming certain proportions that may or may not be accurate within my image. I recommend you do this sooner rather than later and not wait till most of your painting is done, like I did. But hey, just one woman's thoughts. Something else I'm kind of particular about is color. I find that white is a fairly opaque pigment. It's a lot easier for me to go back in and add whites or lighten up an area, but it's a lot harder for me to go back to black. So I tend to go straight in and mark out my darks with pure dark pigments and then go in with my mid-tones with whatever colors I want to be there with adding as little white as possible because I don't want to get muddy colors. In order to keep the whites and black pigments as far away from each other as possible, I will use different paint brushes specifically for lights and darks. And sometimes I even have a blending brush in there. But you will commonly see me out here with like five paint brushes in hand. So in summary, I'm an avid supporter of using five brushes at once and one for each phase of your shade range. Darks, mid-tones, and lights. A third tip that I was reminded of is have patience. The kind of art I tend to do is pretty realistic, so anyone with the right patience and practice could achieve results similar to what I have here. So if you like what you see, call 1-800-PAINT-TODAY and pick up your own set of time and practice. No refunds. Satisfaction guaranteed. But honestly, I spent this whole section painting my eyebrows and it's only the fraction of the actual time it took to paint them. So this stuff really just takes time, and if you don't want a naked forehead, you gotta put in the work. I love how blendable and soft oils are, because it feels almost like you're sculpting on a flat surface. You're pushing back the shadows and the distant parts with your paintbrush and then letting the light parts reveal themselves, carving out the negative space as if it were three-dimensional. And I think it's really fun and beautiful. There's a bit of irony in this portrait in that I spent quite a few years of my formative life 
avoiding mirrors. And now I've painted five self-portraits and used a mirror throughout all of it. So I can check that one off the bucket list. But in all reality, I feel like avoiding the mirror gave me almost a mental gap between what I actually look like and what I felt inside. I didn't feel like I related to my external image and it was hard to consolidate my internal identity with who I saw in the mirror or in photos. But now, many years later, I don't struggle with that and I'm totally comfortable making five self-portraits in a row. And I am 98% confident that it is me in this picture. It's pretty wild how the mind develops. If you're wondering why I look so somber in this photo, yes, I had been crying a little bit, but what I was feeling in the moment of that picture was not sadness. It was freedom, relief, lightness, and acceptance. And I hope that feeling of peace and hope that I felt can reach you through this painting. My personal journey has definitely been a privilege as I know not everyone else has the awareness around mental health and self-discovery that I was able to explore. And honestly, I still feel like I have a ways to grow. But this painting is special to me, this moment and this image. So maybe this message will go onto the internet and remind someone to be more gentle with themselves today. Regardless, I hope you, yes you, have a wonderful day and I extremely appreciate you watching. This video was a lot of fun to make, this painting was a lot of fun to paint, and I hope at least part of it was entertaining for you. And or educational, who knows? I'm so excited to have a bigger art studio one day. So I can lock you out, huh? Oh, Emilian. There are a couple things that I would fix if I didn't want to move on with my life yet, but I do, so here we are. Oh, and special shout out to my new little friend, Safflower Oil, for allowing me to glaze some redness back into my face. And of course, my wonderful selection of paintbrushes. Okay, bye. You're gonna get fur all over this painting.